Hi all, let's have a look at another mega clash between the mighty Stockfish playing white in this game against Leela. So this was in round 87 of the TSEC Season 15 Super Final. E4 from Stockfish and Leela plays G6. The opening book given ends here after D6. We see Knight C3, C5 from Leela. And now after D5, Bishop takes C3 check. Slightly double-edged, you might think, because white has that semi-open B file. The bishop could be a big trouble piece for black later. We see e5, trying to close up the position. Uh, an immediate queen a5 is also interesting, but white could actually just leave the c3 pawn. For example, this position gives white a load of compensation and pressure. Uh, it's very controversial for black here, I believe, overall to do this kind of thing. So e5 is trying to lock up that center, close the center. Bishop d3, knight d7. h4, very aggressive. We see queen e7. Already, if black does a move like knight g f6, it, it seems to run into trouble. For example, bishop h6. This position, even if the bishop's like kicked back, it can go to d2. And then this knight's kicked back. And overall, you know, as an example, white's doing really well here. So um, we see queen e7, f3. Uh, h5 now from black bishop e3 king d8 so Lila is trying to find some safety on the queen side on the king side one would think that g4 later might be dangerous white could arrange for g4 perhaps but here with the king going to the queen side one would think this b file is going to play a big role now in the game queen d2 king c7 knight e2 f6 rook b1 queen f8 White castles kingside, knight h6, rook b2. Uh, f4 doesn't really do too much here. Black can always grab that e5 square, and immediately knight g4 might be good. So, for example, this position is no big deal for white. The e5 square is one square which could be quite valuable to black. Uh, so, we see rook b2, b6, knight g3. And the knight gets out of the way of this battery, knight f7, rook fb1, rook g8. So with that knight out of the way, this is now possible to maybe play g5 one day. Queen c2, rook b8, king f2, as though saying to black, I'm going to put my king now on the queen side. So any g5 is not going to be that great. Um, we see queen g7, and the king goes to e1, knight d8. Uh, here, as an example of g5, white could actually play queen a4. Uh, that looks very nasty with an idea of going into c6, potentially. So if, if bishop b7, knight takes, and then this position is uh, very, very nice for white. Uh, so there's no point, it seems, doing g5 here. We see knight d8, queen a4, king b7. That does protect that pawn. Here, if g5 taking the pawn this is uh, quite nice for white white's got things covered it's pretty solid so king b7 we see king d2 knight f8 queen b5 king a8 a4 so a lot of pressure being put clearly on this b file with the battering ram effect of a5 uh, coming in queen c7 a5 Knight d7, and believe it or not, and I haven't got the form pawn t shirt, but Stockfish installs a form pawn instead of playing a takes b6. So, believing this might actually be stronger. So, a very interesting decision there, perhaps you could argue. Uh, perhaps, you know, black can weather the storm on a takes, and the structural uh, issues might actually be more exposed there. So a6, very, very interesting, installing the form pawn. Uh, so knight f8. Leaders without much counterplay here, especially with that form pawn now installed. Uh, we see now after knight f7, rook a2, rook d8, queen b1. The king goes to c2 now, and the king outrageously goes to b3. So Stockfish is seemingly having a, a nice celebration of the grip it has on the possession not doing too much rook g7 if black tries to expose the king it doesn't really do anything uh, for example this doesn't lead anywhere white could just take on c5 and 
uh, laugh being tilt up. So um, rook g7, knight f1. We see queen a1, bishop c2 here. Uh, at the moment, that form pawn is protected. Knight g3, bishop d3, knight f1, g3, bishop d2, knight e3, knight c2, rook h2. Bit of high level shuffling. Or maybe one side is composing some sort of musical uh, composition. Uh, so bishop f1. We see now if white plays h takes g, black gets that potential for an outside pass pawn. So this is not particularly desirable. For example, with h4, black should be absolutely fine. So I believe Stockfish is doing the right thing here, not taking on g5. Knight f7. Knight a3 offering the form pawn, but otherwise knight b5 anyway, and it's a really, uh, you know, a, a position where d6 is under fire. So this is actually taken. Uh, let's say it wasn't, say bishop d7, then knight b5 is, uh, you can see the logic of the king on b3 here, because white, with pressure on d6, can play for f4, potentially, to try and dismantle black like that as well later uh, but as an example bishop takes here you know white's doing very well here undoubled the pawns uh, form pawns really good restricting black's pieces it looks like a very nice position for white so uh in fact the form pawn was taken and this does seem as though <laughs> with this rook also being able to participate sometimes on this mighty a file this does seem as though black's going to be smashed somehow uh, so we see bishop h3, bishop b7. If bishop c8, then knight b5, huge threat of rook takes a7. And this position just, just crashes through, for example. Uh, here, uh, instead, if a5, bishop takes c8, rook takes a5, this is also crushing. So it is very scary, the a file. Bishop b7, bishop f5 hitting the rook. Bishop e3, uh, now hg, and now finally knight b5, we see a6, so black's clinging on, it seems, tactically here. Uh, f4, so with pressure on d6, Stockfish is now also targeting e5, as well as d6. g takes, g takes, rook g3, a little threat to deal with. If e takes f4, then after bishop takes this position, in fact, white gets a very nice position. For example, like this, it looks as though white's got all the pressure. Black's very, very passive as an example scenario. Uh, just the fictional scenario. If that h pawn is moved, it, it gets weak. Uh, so basically, uh, rook g3, queen e1. Uh, we see f takes. Now d takes, or knight takes. You might think it leaves d6 behind and in fact queen h4 is strong here trying to distract that defender of d6 away so for example like this and this is just very strong for white this position and if black dare to take the queen leaving d6 as a liability then that's going to just be snapped off so uh f takes d takes trying to reduce that liability but of course white now has a very very dangerous passed pawn here in the center and Stockfish gets behind that with queen d1. Uh, we see h4, d6, and it looks really nasty. Knight c7 check. Now d7 actually facilitates the threat. Knight e8, forking queen and rook. Black gets out of the way of that in advance. Uh, we see queen a1, knight d8. Uh, Black's very passive here. As an example, say knight takes d7, then check here is pretty crushing for example like this is a, a nice mating idea uh, also in this line if bishop takes then again it's pretty scary after knight d5 uh, rook a2 and the a file is, another, is a disaster if black has to give up the queen to avoid being mated that's not very great uh, for black so knight d8 check check and now the rook comes into the center rook hd2 not just supporting the pawn but there's another idea here after check check the other idea is revealed now 
leaving the bishop hanging, just playing rook d6, believe it or not. Now, let's have a look actually at rook takes e3. If this was played, rook takes e3. Uh, why is this uh, carnage for black? Well, first, knight b5 check pushes the king away from b6. And now rook takes b6, and there's a great convergence of power on a6 here, which doesn't just look pretty. It actually really crushes black. Say h3 for sake of argument, then one rook sack to crash through. That is all that's enough, really, uh, to checkmate the black king. So pure carnage. Yeah, you don't want to give <laughs> Stockfish too many tactical trump cards from the opening basically otherwise this kind of thing happens so that bishop is <laughs> seems to be hanging as well quite a interesting position with the pressure on a6 b6 and c5 black's position is clearly under great scrutiny here uh yeah so from from all angles okay with such huge scrutiny on the black position yeah, maybe the e3 bishop isn't such an issue here. Uh, so black actually played, Leela played queen takes d6, which of course runs into knight b5 check. Now you might wonder why after rook d6 this is necessary or deemed the best move. If uh, knight bc6 as an example, then bang, rook takes a6. This crashes through, uh, for example, like this. That's checkmate. Uh, and here, if king b8... Then rook takes here, taking here. Uh, so, you know, there's huge threats like queen a8 check now for queen takes b7. So this position is just pretty gory stuff where white just crashes through with advantage. Things drop off like h8 in, in some variations. And here, um, also, if bishop takes c6, as an example, then, um, you know, white's crashing through on the A file again. That's checkmate. So it's very, very scary stuff. So queen takes d6 was deemed uh, the best defensive try here. Yeah, it looks it looks terrifying the position. Okay, so um, in fact, yeah, so we have actually queen takes d6, knight b5 check offering the queen. Now taking on e3, uh, rook h2, rook g8, knight c8, uh, knight bc6, king b2. We see king b8, queen d1, h3, check. Knight takes b6, check. It's carnage, isn't it? Queen takes c5, check. Discover check there. Knight e7. Check okay, black's got seemingly a, a dangerous pawn, but after knight takes c6, knight takes the game was actually ended here. Uh, the pawn's not enough in this position, the game could continue. For example, queen takes c6, white's much faster here. So, for example, queening, we just play check and then we're mating uh, soon after with queen and bishop, like that, as an example. So, yeah, pretty much. Uh, as you might expect, the tactical trump cards given to Stockfish from the opening are kind of handy to the likes of Stockfish for blasting its way through uh, things like the A-file. Uh, so yeah, with the uh, bishop pair like that, Stockfish kind of loves that sort of position. Interestingly, yeah, it moved its king to the queen side uh, out of any problems with g5, any any counterplay in inverted commas. So in a way, the double pawns also added solidity to where the king would eventually reside in this game as well. And that's an interesting aspect of it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this game. If you did, please click on the top left box, uh, which should appear shortly. Become a member at chessworld.net. Uh, you can also test yourself on the variations covered in this and other games from the improved menu at Chessworld, the puzzle books option, which has a link to the annotated game. Comments, questions, donations, see the description. Like, share, subscribe with the notification bell. Really appreciated. Thanks very much. Let's have a quick dip into the uh, Chess World puzzle book for this particular game. So I only do a few, like the first five. So White's play for a clear advantage here 
in this variation I think maybe h5 was dangerous hg oh hold on as I mentioned bishop g5 yeah this this is going to be without a counterpart it's just just pin on h6 hg just ignore uh we got another pin there so it's very dangerous this kind of scenario uh, for the dark squared bishop here white's play uh for an advantage here I think we might be able to play knight takes h5 in this scenario nope hg first hint oh going for c6 going for c6 yes because there's always knight f5 after because the rook's protecting g2 it doesn't crash through for black so getting into c6 would be key now I believe maybe just taking and then g4 and then rook h2 try and go for that pawn okay so here we can just go into that no we can't go into the c6 uh, in this particular position I think we we have time to take here believe it or not and now with g2 covered I think knight f5 and here I'm not sure <laughs> uh, what was the yeah, hint bishop f1 okay it's it looks pretty bleak for black uh, without too much counterplay the knight's controlling also g3 here uh, that's a couple more very complicated uh, positions white to play for a clear advantage here oh this is just testing if the king could be exposed it can't be I think we just take off on c5 and just retreat the bishop we are getting ready for c4 it's fine I think it'll be okay to play for c4 so that would be great for white and one last uh, you know check on variations we covered uh, a clear advantage here Mm, I think knight b5 if that form pawn had been left that's the question I think knight b5 threatens actually knight c7 chatmate uh, so this undoubles the pawns I think maybe we can reinforce h4 with this yeah just reinforce h4 uh, so there's other little exercises if you want to check there for that book um, so out of all the variations uh, that we got a few out for the uh, book uh, let's have a look at the improved menu puzzle books uh, so there were 26 there um, so often when stockfish wins there's more variations uh, I guess that's very logical more, more tactics often uh, famous players we have quite a few famous players to check out there at chess world if you want to check that out my favorite by far at the moment is I'm working through it with many people many students Bobby Fisher sacrifices and strong finishes they're all really cool Fisher was super incisive in his game finishes okay thanks very much